hey, we are in Isaiah, towards the end now, chapter 60 through 63. Isaiah has been telling Israel the way it is. You know, it's a dark time. But now uh, the light is coming. It is time to get up. It's time to take action. And the light is going to be bright enough that even the Gentiles are going to get to see it and be involved. So let's begin in reading uh, Isaiah chapter 60 in the New American Standard Version. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness will cover the earth, and deep darkness the peoples. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes round about and see, they all gather together, they come to you. Your sons will come from afar, and your daughters will be carried in the arms. Then you will see and be radiant, and your heart will thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea will be turned to you. The wealth of the nations will come to you. A multitude of camels will cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba will come. They will bring gold and frankincense and they and will bear good news of the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedar will be gathered together to you. The rams of, ne of Naboth will minister to you. They will go up with the acceptance on my altar, and I shall glorify my glorious house. Who are these who fly like a cloud and like the doves to their lattices? Surely the coastlands will wait for me, and the ships of Tarshish will come out. To bring your sons from afar, their silver and their gold with them, for the name of the Lord your God and for the Holy One of Israel, because he has glorified you. Foreigners will build up your walls, and their kings will minister to you. For in my wrath I struck you, and in my favor I have had compassion on you. Your gates will be open continually, they will not be closed day or night, so that men may bring to you the wealth of the nations with their kings led in procession for the nation of, and the kingdom which will not serve you will perish and the nations will be utterly ruined the glory of lebanon will come to you the juniper the box tree and the cypress together to beautify the place of my sanctuary and i shall make the place of my feet glorious the sons of those who afflicted you will come bowing to you and all those who despised you will bow themselves at the soles of your feet and they will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas you have been forsaken and hated, with no one passing through, I will make you an everlasting pride, a joy from generation to generation. You will have also suck the milk of nations and suck the breasts of kings. Then you will know that I, the Lord, am your Savior and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob." Instead of bronze, I will bring gold, and instead of iron, I will bring silver. And instead of wood, bronze, and instead of stones, iron, and I will make peace your administrators and righteousness your overseers. Violence will not be heard again in your land, nor devastation or destruction within your borders, but you will call your walls salvation and your gates praise. No longer will you have the sun for light by day, nor for brightness will the moon give you light. But you will have the Lord for an everlasting light, and your God for your glory. Your sun will no longer set, nor will your moon wane. For you will have the Lord for an everlasting light, and the days of your mourning will be over. Then all your people will be righteous. They will possess the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. The smallest one will become a clan, and the least one a mighty nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in its time. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives and freedom to prisoners, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all 
who mourn, to grant those who mourn in Zion, giving them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a spirit of fainting. So they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Then they will rebuild the ancient ruins. They will raise up the former devastations, and they will repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. Strangers will stand and pasture your flocks. The foreigners will be your farmers and your vine dressers. But you will be called the priests of the Lord. You will be spoken of as ministers of our God. You will eat the wealth of nations, and in their riches you will boast. Instead of your shame, you will have a double portion. And instead of humiliation, they will shout for joy over their portion. Therefore, they will possess a double portion in their land. Everlasting joy will be theirs. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and the burnt offering. And I will faithfully give them their recompense and make an everlasting covenant with them. Then their offspring will be known among the nations and their descendants in the midst of the peoples. All who see them will recognize them because they are the offspring whom the Lord has blessed. I will rejoice greatly in the Lord. My soul will exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has wrapped me with a robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as a garden causes the things sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not keep quiet, until their righteousness goes forth like brightness, and her salvation like a torch that is burning. The nations will see your righteousness, and all kings your glory, and you will be called by a new name with ch- the mouth of the Lord will designate. You will also be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. It will no longer be said to you forsaken, nor to your land will it any longer be said desolate. But you will be called, my delight is in her and your land married. For the Lord delights in you and to him your land will be married. For as a young man marries a virgin, so your sons will marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so your God will rejoice over you. On your walls, O Jerusalem, I have appointed watchmen. All day and all night they will never keep silent. You who remind the Lord, take no rest for yourselves. And give him no rest until he establishes and makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. The Lord as sworn by his right hand and by his strong arm, I will never again give your grain as food for your enemies, nor will foreigners drink your new wine for which you have labored. But those who garner it will eat it and praise the Lord, and those who gather it will drink it in the courts of my sanctuary. Go through, go through the gates, clear the way for the people, build up, build up the highway, remove the stones, lift up the standard over the peoples. Behold, The Lord has proclaimed to the end of the earth. Say to the daughter of Zion, Lo, your salvation comes. Behold, your reward is with him and his recompense before him. And they will call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And you will be called sought out, a city not forsaken. Who is this who comes from Edom with garments of glowing colors from Basra? This one who is majestic in his apparel, marching in the greatness of his strength. It is I who seek in righteousness, mighty to save. Why is your apparel red and your garments like the one who treads in the winepress? I have trodden the wine trough alone, and the peoples there was no man with me. I also trod them in my anger and trampled them in my wrath, and their life blood is sprinkled on my garments, and I stained all my raiment. For the day of vengeance was in my heart, and my year of redemption has come. I looked, and there was no one to help, and I was astonished that there was no one to uphold. My own arm brought salvation to me, and my wrath upheld me. I trod down the peoples in my anger and made them drunk in my wrath, and I poured out their lifeblood on the earth. I shall make mention of the loving kindness of the Lord, the praises of the Lord, according to all that the Lord has granted us and the great goodness towards the house of Israel, which he has granted them according to his compassion and according to the abundance 
of his loving kindness. For he said, Surely they are my people, sons who will not deal falsely. And so he became their savior. In all their affliction he was afflicted. And the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his mercy he redeemed them. And he lifted them and carried them all the days of old. But they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. Therefore he turned himself to become their enemy. He fought against them. Then his people remember the days of old, of Moses, where he who brought them up out of the sea with the shepherds of his flock. Where is he who put his Holy Spirit in the midst of them? Who caused his glorious arm to go at the right hand of Moses? Who divided the waters before them to make for himself an everlasting name? Who led them through the depths like the horse in the wilderness? They did not stumble. As the cattle which go into the valley, the Spirit of the Lord gave them rest. So you led your people to make yourself a glorious name. Look down from heaven and see from your holy and glorious habitation. Where are your zeal and your mighty deeds? The stirrings of your heart and your compassion are restrained toward me. For you are our father, though Abraham does not know us and Israel does not recognize us. You, O Lord, are our father, our redeemer from of old is your name. Why, O Lord, do you cause us to stray from your ways and harden our heart from fearing you? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage, your people, your holy people possess your sanctuary for a little while. Our adversaries have trodden it down. We have become like those over whom you have never ruled, like those who were not called by your name. There's something interesting in that last chapter that you just don't necessarily get from the initial reading. There's something that's unique has taken place. Basra is the capital of Edom. You see the arrow pointing to, to Basra. Edom uh, is that country. Edom is, if you remember from our previous readings, Edom is the descendants of Esau. Edom means red. Uh, red because Esau's favorite soup was red lentil soup. And, and so Basra, its meaning, its, its name means wine press or, gape, or grape gathering. And so when Isaiah is talking about wine presses and when he's talking about stains and when he is talking about blood red, his readers are putting two and two together. And they realize exactly what Isaiah is talking about and how Edom has been a thorn in the side of Israel for so many years. But there is a light that is coming uh, that is, as you know, the secret. It's Jesus. Um, where's your light coming from day to day? Is it, is it Jesus? That's the question that, that we have to think about and we have to consider and uh, where our loyalties really lie. I hope you have a great day. Talk to you later.